Hello everybody, this is Zero Day and this is the Cloud Breach S3 scenario in Cloud Go. When starting the scenario, you are simply provided the EC2 server IP address that you must target and that's about it. It's based off of the an actual scenario that happened with Capital One and how they got breached in 2019 which led to millions of credit cards being leaked. We go over how to stealthily pen test an environment and bypass guard duty findings, specifically the instance credential exfiltration findings in the IAM service, as well as how to configure the EC2 metadata service such that it is more secure. We were provided the EC2 server IP, which we must target. So let's just curl this IP and see what response we get. So curl this IP. And we see that it says this server is configured to proxy request to the EC2 metadata service. Please modify your request host header and try again. So let's just put our host. And we're going to put the host as 169.254.169.254. And the reason for this is because this is the magic IP address associated with the metadata service. And as it says that the service configured a proxy request to the EC2 metadata service, this is why we put this metadata service IP as the host header value. Now, obviously, this is quite insecure because the EC2 metadata service, or any metadata service for that matter, contains sensitive information, such as uh, security credentials. So when we uh, curl this IP address with this host header, we have the metadata service endpoints that we can then curl. So if we do curl slash latest, which is the latest endpoint in the metadata service, we can see that there's metadata, user data, and just dynamic data, but we want the metadata. So we do metadata and we have all kinds of nice information to look at. The most important one is in this IAM folder here, as this contains the security credentials. So security dash credentials. And then we see the EC2 role that is associated with this instance. So when we query this role, the output is the access key, secret access key, and the token for this role. So if we quickly just configure our profile, we'll call it EC2 breach, put in the access key, the secret access key, and the token. And I'll just do echo AWS session token equals this put it in the credentials file. And so now we can perform commands like the AWS STS get dash caller dash identity command, something like this. But the problem with this command is that it triggers alerts because for many reasons, first of all, we're running on a pen test distro called Parrot OS. So our user agent will get logged by CloudTrail and then that will get flagged by GuardDuty because it sees that some API call is coming from a uh, penetration testing operating system. And so that is a medium finding by GuardDuty. To avoid that, you could obviously change your user agent, but that's not enough because on top of that, we're running this command from an IP address that is not that of the EC2 instance. It'll see that the source IP address is not this. And so a way to get around that, a security researcher by the name of Nick Fricette found that if you create an EC2 instance within a private subnet behind multiple VPC endpoints, that you could actually bypass the, this guard duty finding. Now, previous to January 30th, 2022, there was a guard duty finding called instance credential exfiltration dot outside AWS. And if we go, we could just look that up on, uh, on uh, Google. 
we'll look at guard duty findings IAM and then we scroll down to the credential exfiltration findings we can see exactly what triggers these findings so we go down to credential exfiltration inside AWS this is the newer finding so let's start with the one that was there before January 30th so this is the original instance credential exfiltration finding by guard duty and it states that this finding informs you that a host outside of AWS has attempted to run AWS API operations using temporary AWS credentials that were created on an EC2 instance in your AWS environment. So this finding gets triggered when it sees that an API call is coming from an IP address that is not owned by AWS. So what attackers did before January 30th is they simply spun up an EC2 instance within their own AWS account and only ran API calls from within that EC2 instance. That way they were able to bypass this outside AWS finding. Once AWS found out about this, they created a new finding called Instance Credential Exfiltration Inside AWS. It basically states that if an API call is coming from, an a from a source IP address that is owned by AWS, but is not that of the EC2 instance that it came from, if it's not from this exact EC2 instance IP address that you exfiltrated the credentials from, then it triggers that inside AWS finding. So the way to get around that is there's this tool called Sneaky Endpoints created by Nick Fricetta. I'm sure I'm uh, butchering his name, but he did great research on this and he created this tool called Sneaky Endpoints, which you can just clone go I put in opt sneaky endpoints and all you have to do is terraform in it when you first uh, download this repository and after you do that you just type terraform apply now this takes a while so I already ran it here you see the it outputs the instance ID the EC2 instance ID which you can connect to with AWS SSM start desk session start dash session dash dash target and then you input the host ID now for some reason with my AWS uh, installation whenever I run this command my shell just freezes so I'll just connect to this via the browser and so I'll go here go to EC2 connect to sneaky endpoints actions connect connect and so this way we can connect to the EC2 instance via the browser so I'll just type in bash really quick and this is the internal IP address of the EC2 instance now something really cool about this is that if you look at the cloud trail logs of the API calls coming from this EC2 instance, you will not see a public IP address. You'll actually just see the private IP address. So let's just run a couple of commands. So we say we see that we got the credentials from the EC2 instance. So now let's put these credentials into this EC2 instance. So we'll call it EC2 breach. And let's just transfer over the credentials. I'll pause the video really quickly and put those in. Okay, so now that I put the credentials in, we can continue with our commands. So a lot of the times there is sensitive information in S3 buckets. So let's just enumerate that with AWS S3 LS and provide the profile of EC2 breach. And we see there are a couple of buckets. These are the CloudTrail logs that I've configured in my own environment. Uh, these are the, this is the sneaky endpoints bucket that you can use to transfer tools and whatever you would like into this EC2 instance. And this is the bucket created by the CloudGoat scenario. So let's just look at this. AWS S3 LS and just put that in there. 
and we see nice juicy information with cardholder data, primary, secondary, corporate. Uh, a really cool thing that you could do is if you want to download multiple file, files recursively, you could just do AWS S3 copy and put the recursive flag at the end. And we downloaded all the files. I should probably create a directory for that. Let's call it make dir s3 and do that again. And we see all of the files. And that that's basically all there is for this cloud good scenario, but Let's look at the cloud trail logs to see what that looked like and as well as uh, guard duty to see if guard duty trig if the credential exfiltration findings were triggered. So if we look at cloud trail, we'll go to our bucket here, our cloud trail bucket. We'll refresh, we'll see 1234. Let's see what was logged then. And then we will also see at 1239. It does it every five minutes. So let's just download this. And uh, I'll pause the video really quickly and just put all the files in my virtual machine. So I transferred the cloud trail log from 1239 into my virtual machine. Uh, so let's look at this cloud trail log. And if we remember, I think it was the, the, I, the internal IP address for that EC2 instance that we created was 10.0.0.184. So if we look at the cloud trail logs, we will see that that actually, that IP address actually shows up instead of the public IP address. So we see the source IP address is 10.0.0.184 and it's running an SSM command. And here is another SSM.amazon.aws. But we see whatever command we run from within that instance is 10.0.0.184 and not some public IP address that is not that of the EC2 instance that we compromised. Because of that, you're able to successfully bypass this finding of uh, credential exfiltration, both inside AWS and outside AWS, because those simply look at the public IP address. But when the CloudTrail only sees source IP address being that of a private IP address, it simply does not know whether that is outside AWS, inside AWS, or what it is even, maybe it's okay. And so this begs the question that maybe AWS should create a new guard duty finding, wherein if the source IP address, even if it's an internal IP address, if it's not equal to the internal IP address of the EC2 instance that you compromised, then there should be an additional finding for that. If we look at the AWS instances in this current environment, I'll use my Cloud Goat account. This has administrator access on it. If we look at this, we see the private IP address of 10.0.0.184. This is our sneaky endpoints instance. But if we look at the instance for the cloud goat, we see that it has this private IP address, 10.10.10.35, which obviously is not the same as the uh, internal IP address that we just created. So this should be a finding that I believe AWS should create to stop this form of a VPC endpoint credential exfiltration. Additionally, if we look at guard duty to see if it picked up on anything, we can see that guard duty says that we don't have any findings. Let's refresh. Simply says root credential usage. And that is it. That This just has to do with using your root account. So there's 
absolutely no findings at all. But if we were to run something like AWS STS get dash caller dash identity from my specific IP address, which is my home IP address, uh, let's say dash dash profile EC2 breach. We see we are given the output of the API call. And if we just wait for a couple of minutes, we will see that guard duty picks up on this and alerts the AWS account of this high finding. I'll just pause the video and return once guard duty finds it. So I took a little break, but uh, coming back to guard duty, we look at all the findings. Uh, we see that here are some findings, uh, IAM root credential usage finding. Uh, that just has to do with using the root account. But other than that, we see that there's the unauthorized access IAM user instance credential exfiltration outside AWS. And this is the resource, resource from which that was ran. Um, there's multiple different uh, findings from previous tests that I ran. Here's one for S, an S3 bucket, and there's multiple different findings. So how do we mitigate this weakness with uh, metadata in this particular scenario? Well, if you recall, we were able to simply curl the metadata service, and just like that, we were able to get the metadata. But if we were to harden the environment, we could do the, we can configure the metadata such that it uses IMDS v2, Instance Metadata Service version 2. And what that is, is essentially the same thing as Instance Metadata Service version 1, which is what we have running right now, except it requires that you, in addition, provide a token header. And only once you provide the specific token header, then you can actually query the metadata service. Otherwise, you will get an unauthorized or forbidden error message. Now, this token is called x-aws-ec2-metadata-token. Using this token, you can query the metadata service. So to enforce that, we can do AWS EC2 modify dash instance dash metadata dash options, provide our instance ID, which is if you go EC2 describe dash instances profile EC, uh, cloud breach. No, just cloud goat. Um, and that, by the way, that was completely instant because I am running a tool called AWS C Lion that simply ran this command from memory because it realized that it was a duplicate command that I ran before. I'll put a link to that in the description. So the instance ID was right here. Provide this instance ID. And then we say HTTP dash tokens required and HTTP dash endpoint enabled. And before we run this, let's look at exactly what the metadata options are for this specific instance. So as we can see, it says HTTP tokens optional. It does not require the AWS EC2 metadata token. It says it's optional. So let's make it required and provide our profile of Cloud Go, which has administrator access. And so now we made it required to use that metadata token. So if we run the same command of curling, we now get 401 unauthorized and we cannot query the metadata service without having this metadata token. So this is exactly what Azure and GCP has by default, although there are API, there is an API endpoint in GCP that you can query called slash v1 beta. This is the original endpoint in the GCP environment. And if your client has this enabled, you should definitely check it out and make sure that it gets remediated. All EC2 instances that are at least publicly available 
should have IMDS V2 enabled. 